Ooh, what's up, guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with yours truly, the Scarander. And today I got myself against a match against Anima. And well, this is this is a match that definitely are overdue. She posted this on Saturday, if I remember quickly. And I really wanted to do the same thing, but I sadly didn't get around to it. And um, the weekend just went on. Uh, but now I'm doing it. I mean, this was a very good battle. I had this battle when I was at Stockholm, actually. So it was on, on my hotel room, just, you know, spending time, really. Just wanted the day to go over there because I obviously didn't have any, anything to do while I didn't work there. So, yeah. Sometimes since I battled her, and last time I battled her, I had a very huge issue against uh, her Frogadier and Ice type me. So I decided to have the same issue this time and brought three folks that are weak to ice. And I actually didn't thought about too much what I did with my team. I just knew I had to have a few pokes that could work with DNA, so I decided to uh, switch out a few pokes, and it just turns out that they were extremely weak to ice. And that is unfortunate. Uh, so her float seal is going to be a huge threat this battle, and she got the Meowstic, Cacton, Odino, Rotom, Fan, and Torkoal, so a very good matchup there. And I myself using Malamar, Gogoat, Special Bed Fist, Optimus Prime, DNA, and an Octal with Defog. So, yeah. I hope they work. Without further ado, guys, let's actually enjoy this game. So at the get-go here, I knew my Malmore can deal with anything besides her so-called, so... Um, this is extremely unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, but really, I'm forced to switch out because I do think she could pack the uh, will o -Wisp, you know, in worst-case scenario. But she goes directly for the Lava Plume, and that's really fine, to be honest, but you do get the burn. And um, she actually decides to switch out here, and I was thinking here, like, how could you know I have Surf? Nobody knows I have Surf. If you aren't following me, so I should actually be... I, I, I should definitely be in honor for her taking the hard time watching my battles, but that, that, is, that, that is just unfortunate. Uh, so I decided to go for the Echoed Voice because I knew that you know, voice damage do go through the subs if she decides to set off. And uh, she goes for the Sucker Punch, getting the Rocky Helmet damage from me, and that is extremely good because I knew at least I could whittle down the Cacton, and my Ceratool and my Malamar can actually deal with her rather well here. So I'm just gonna go for a superpower, and I'm gonna expect her to switch out her and sacking off. She doesn't want to sack off the Cacton just yet because of the priority with Sucker Punch. So I'm just gonna go for Rock Slide, expecting her to go for Rotom Fan. And um, she did switch out, but not to what I wanted to. Uh, so the Rock Slide won't do anything, it's super defensive, like wow. <laughs> I have no means of staying in there. So if she goes for John, then egg move there. It's real nice, but I'm gonna show her that I'm in the physical DNA here and get for go for a U-turn and it did a fair damage there. So I'm gonna back into Saratul expecting her to go for a psychic move. So very lucky for me and I do expect her to go for a John again and I just thought that I might as well try to kill it. If I switch out to DNA, she's just gonna switch out and uh, there is no means for me of actually do doing that properly. And here I just fought out, let's go for Hector, and I do expect the rocks to come up here, and it's my best bet is of course to get rid of them right off the bat, and just go for Defog. And Lifesavers here, and like I said, Float Seal is definitely my biggest threat this battle, and uh, I have no nothing to switch into, because everything in my team are weak to ice, so fuck it. <laughs> I just, I had to go for some damage. I should maybe have gone for Toxic, thinking about it, but yeah. I was thinking I could outspeed, and it's very likely that she's gonna sack it off eventually. So I go into my DNA here yet again, and I gotta expect her to bring the Torkoal, trying to go for Roxy yet again. So I'm just going for a U-turn. Uh, like, like you guys will see here, I do nothing. There, There is no damage there. I didn't even move like her each for me to roll there. So I go into Optimus Prime. Like I said, I do expect her to um, over-predict and thinking that I don't want to go for an earthquake, but really, there is no reason for me not to, even though she got the rolling fan. And she goes for the Stealth Rocks, and um, they are now here to stay because my Defogger is dead, of course. And I'm just gonna finish her off with a Shadow Punch, and the reason I did that is in case she decides to switch out. Because I do miss the Rolling Fan if I go for an Earthquake, if that were the case. So, I do a little weird switch here and go to my Go-Goat. I should definitely have stayed in here thinking about it, because my Goaler can actually take an Ice Punch, but I... I choked! Basically, and uh, it paid me dearly because that, that cost me my go go too, which actually couldn't work this well in this battle anyway because the Rodan fan he, he has yet to come back into the battle. So at this point, I was thinking, yeah, let's just go for the play rough. 
and you do as much damage as possible. And I do fair damage to the Rotom fan who's coming in and almost actually killing it. And the Shadow, shadow Ball here really, really hurts. Uh, I barely live that one, and uh, I was thinking she's gonna fodder it, but she doesn't. She go for the pruding, the Arduino, which got the regenerator, and uh, she will actually decide to go for a knockoff. And uh, I mean, that's a fair move. Um, definitely one of the best bets to do. I think she got toxic too, and I barely live that one. And um, I decided to go for a wild charge here because thinking about it afterwards, I should probably go on for a play rough, but then again. Uh, her cacton would just have come in anyway and finished me off with a Sucker Punch, but then I would actually be in a better position for my Malamar to cover superpower. But uh, yeah, I think a Sucker Punch would have to kill my Malamars. I think she got this game in the bag from that position anyway. So that's why I decided to go for a wild shot because I, I, I was not going to win this one. And uh, I just I had a lot of fun uh, using these guys because um, didn't they, you know. It's, like I said, it's one of the worst pokes ever introduced this generation, and seeing him almost pulling through was, um, yeah, it was extremely good, and it was very, very fun seeing that going down like that. I mean, how, who could have thought it that DNA would actually pull some weight this battle, and uh, the end result was very, very amusing. And, uh, yeah, a fair game by Anima, I mean, it was much closer this time. Had I not had the Ice Weakness, I might have pulled some weight there, but overall I think it was a very good battle, and thank you Anima Force for the battle. We both had a lot of weird sets this game, and I think it paid off really well, because it just, it went, it became a really close battle, I mean, both were Floatzilla and Cacturn were half at speech, so it was definitely closer than it looked like, but that's because I got the momentum from the DNA, and and um, yeah, it just, it became an entertaining battle because of that, and um, her set is really, really good, and she deserved this win because of that, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. I mean, don't forget to check her out, guys. Um, you guys already have checked her out for sure, to be honest, but still, just want to mention that, of course. Um, and other than that, you know, congratulations to Anima for reaching 3,000 subs, that's incredible. <laughs> so cool. Um, and, yeah. I guess that's, that will be it. Uh, remember guys, the sky is the limit, and have a good day and take care, and uh, yeah. Very smooth ending here, take care guys. <laughs> Bye.